Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. At its most basic level, buying an ATV begins with one decision for a consumer. The very first question you need to answer is this. Are you looking for features or are you buying based on price? A consumer looking for features is likely prepared to spend a bit more as price is less of a concern, but a consumer buying based on price has to be willing to sacrifice some of those features to save a few bucks. When Can-Am entered the ATV market, they decided their focus would be entirely on the former. The plan was to develop Can-Am into a premium brand that demanded a premium dollar but sacrificed nothing in the way of features or performance. Basically, a vehicle for ATVers who want it all and want the best. And it's hard to argue they didn't achieve this goal. Historically, Can-Am ATVs have cost more than their competition, but because they include more features and offer higher performance, consumers didn't think twice about spending more money on a premium product. But times are changing. Today, in nearly every consumer marketplace, we see premium brands offering scaled-down versions of their products at lower price points in the hope of attracting consumers who list price as the most important consideration when buying. The Porsche Boxster, Ducati Monster, and BMW 1 Series. These are just a few examples. But the interesting part is that it's working. People who would typically have passed these brands over are now giving them a serious look. These price point vehicles have a lower retail, but still offer the premium quality, feel, and performance that comes with their respective brands. So the question Can-Am asked is this, can this same philosophy work in the ATV industry? And the answer is clearly yes. Last season, Can-Am introduced their entry-level L-Series lineup. While boasting typical Can-Am build quality and performance at a sticker price that's easy to swallow, they do lack a few of the higher end niceties found on other Outlander models. But in reality, sacrifice nothing when the rubber hits the trail. By sharing the general underpinnings with their premium counterparts and shaving off only the items that are in the long run somewhat unnecessary, the L-Series from Can-Am have retained everything that's good about the brand but are now attainable by a wider range of buyers. So why is this important? If Can-Am was selling premium ATVs at premium prices and was doing well, why bother with the L-Series? Simple, loyalty. If an ATVer buys a Can-Am and has a great experience with it, regardless of what features it may or may not have or how much money they may or may not have spent, they'll probably buy another one. Brand loyalty isn't entirely a choice. It's part of the human condition. We're attracted to what we know is good. It's definitely worthwhile for Can-Am to do everything in their power to attract new buyers and entice off-brand riders to buy a Can-Am because they know once they experience and enjoy owning a Can-Am, they'll probably buy another one. The statistics say they'll likely buy a higher-end model in the future, they'll probably recommend Can-Am to their friends, and they'll visit their Can-Am dealer for both service and to purchase accessories. If you want to compete in the ATV market today, you have to offer vehicles that are accessible to all types of buyers. In the past, Can-Am lacked offerings that appealed to budget-conscious riders, but the L-Series changes all of that. Now, pretty much anyone looking to buy a new ATV, whether buying based on features or price, can find a Can-Am that will fit them perfectly. They'll experience the superior quality and performance that Can-Am is hoping will inspire them to buy another one in the future. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. It's been a long time since we've had anything new to say about Articat ATVs. And to be honest, reinforcing the positive attributes of their older models was getting a little annoying. Yet, you can't argue with what these older Articat ATVs did well. 
The problem was that other than these few positive attributes, there wasn't much good to say about the rest of the ATV. For 2015, Arctic Cat has an all new ATV platform they've dubbed the XR. And while it does share some visual cues with its older siblings, don't be fooled into thinking it's just the old chassis with new plastic. This is a completely new ATV from the ground up. About the only component shared with the old model are the engine and the gauge package. Because this is an all new vehicle, we can't just focus on one or two of its traits. We need to get a good picture of what this new beast is all about. So let's take a look at the all new XR700 XT EPS from two distinct angles, the specs and the experience. Let me just state right up front that the specifications list for the XR700 is excellent. It's got 10 inches of front and rear travel, 11 inches of ground clearance, 100 pounds of front and 200 pounds of rear rack capacity and 1,000 pounds towing. Furthermore, it's equipped with a long list of great features, including a CVT transmission with engine braking, power steering, shiftable 4x4 with front diff lock, digital gauge, cool LED accented front and rear lights, aluminum wheels, and integrated storage. There really isn't much else you could ask for. On paper, the XR700 looks really good, but the question everybody is dying to have answered is very simple. How does it work? And the answer isn't quite as simple. Here's why. Under the XR's hood, you'll find the same 695cc single overhead cam four valve EFI mill you've seen many times before. This engine is a good performer for a big displacement single, but the truth is that this power plant suffers the same drawbacks as the 700 single found in Yamaha's Grizzly. A big single produces ample, though not overly smooth bottom end. In fact, you'll never really find yourself in need of more torque, but they run at a top end really fast. At trail speeds, it's a non-issue. This motor does its job unremarkably well. Simply put, it works, but it can't be compared to other big bore twins. With all that said, and in context, this is a good motor. Let's be honest, the part of the XR everybody wants to know about the most is the chassis. Is this an improvement over older Arctic Cat models? And the answer is most certainly yes. Suspension action is a bit stiff on the small stuff, but works excellent on the big bumps. Unlike cats of old, you can feel the suspension moving through the full length of its stroke. There's no question you're using all the suspension you paid for with this vehicle. Handling is drastically improved as well, thanks to better sway control and overall more compliant front suspension. A complete redesign of the front end geometry doesn't hurt either. This vehicle stays flat and doesn't feel like it's rolling over onto its outside front tire under hard cornering. The old bike could be scary, plain and simple, if pushed too hard. This one feels composed and with the help of its standard power steering, handling is quite light. Though we do feel there is still a bit too much feedback through the handlebars. An adjustable power steering system would go a long way in this area. Ergonomically, the XR feels similar to the older models in that you're sitting more up on top of the ATV rather than down inside the chassis. In terms of comfort, this riding position might sacrifice just a little bit. But in terms of functionality, this riding position makes maneuvering your body around the vehicle very easy, especially when things get tight and steep. To wrap things up, there's two more topics we need to discuss, starting with the tires. Our XT package came to us with a set of 25 inch Dura Caden skins wrapped around these cool aluminum wheels. And these might just be the worst tires we've ever run for anything but dry hard pack surfaces. Traction is almost non-existent in slippery conditions and it's really not fair for a vehicle as good as the XR to be rolling on tires like these. It's also not fair for the buyer when they've shelled out extra bling for the XT package. If Arctic Cat could make one change to the stock XR, we think it should be tires worthy of the vehicle they're mounted on. Finally, let's talk about quality. It's no secret that Arctic Cat has suffered in this area in the past, 
but the XR is on a whole different level when it comes to both build and finish quality. And this is important when you're asking a consumer to drop serious jing on one of your vehicles. We hope this is a trend Articat continues with. If the XR is any indication, the future of Articat ATVs looks brighter than it has in over a decade. We're excited to see what they come up with next. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. It doesn't matter if it's your pickup truck, your ATV, or your side-by-side. -side. After the newness wears off, and for those of us who are diehards, even before that, you get bit with the upgrade bug. The aftermarket offers you an endless list of things you can do to your rig, but the most common, and in our opinion, the place to start is with your wheels and tires. And while we always tell you lots about the technology behind the rubber, we rarely give you the important technical info about the actual aluminum wheels. So here goes. ITP is a company that we trust and have for years, not just because they make great looking products, but because they make great looking products that enhance the off-road capabilities of your ATV or side-by-side. There are many styles of rims to choose from, blacked out technical interlace spoke designs, solid heat treated aluminum, double rolled, and the ever important bead lock and dual bead lock for keeping those tires from spinning in extreme situations with big horsepower. It doesn't matter which style you like, you should know what you're getting and what's gone into the rim's design. One of the huge benefits offered from ITP is their aluminum warranty. Most of their rims are structurally warranted for the entire lifetime of the rim, which means you're going to be taken care of. A rim like this SS216 is specifically designed for a side-by-side -side with a load rating of 1,000 pounds. Available in a machined or black ops finish in 12 or 14 by 7 inches wide, you can tailor your wheel to your riding style. The SS series uses a special aluminum alloy formulation for enhanced strength while staying lightweight. The all-new Storm series is not just a sharp-looking rim. It enhances functionality thanks to its very unique design. With eight sets of interlaced wheel spokes, ITP offers unmatched structural integrity at 1,200 pounds of load capacity per rim. This makes the Hurricane Series a top pick for those heavily loading their UTVs over rugged terrain. The integrated rock armor lip is proprietary and adds protection to an area most wheel manufacturers forget about, the inner wheel lip. A unique design that ITP offers is called the T9 Pro Mod. This is a 6061 heat-treated rim that features a double-rolled lip as well as an angled face. In a classic modular style, this .190 wall-constructed aluminum rim is significantly lighter than the competition, reducing unsprung weight and rotating mass for true performance gains. The double-rolled lip adds durability and strength, and the polished finish will grab attention. The T9 comes in both 12 and 14 by 7 sizes. Possibly one of the most misunderstood rims is the beadlock, and ITP offers multiples to fit your specific needs. The SD series are offered in a single beadlock 12 inch and dual beadlock 14 inch. By that I mean the beadlock ring is just on the outside on the 12 inch or both sides on the 14. Thanks to ITP's industry first single piece dual beadlock design in the 14, they can offer total tire security, meaning the tire will stay on no matter what happens to it. So why use a beadlock? Well, in the right situations, beadlocks will offer the added strength that no other rim can. When the terrain gets abusively rocky or the mud gets crazy deep with a huge tire lug, a beadlock will endure. Because the outer plate actually bolts to the rim, you have significantly stronger rim lips and outer surfaces, not to mention a two-year replacement guarantee from ITP. And ITP will also be offering the beadlock in a 15-inch in the very near future. When horsepower and stakes are high, an ITP SD beadlock will pull through. While you have many choices of rim design, we truly believe that ITP offers exceptional performance, a solid warranty, and priceless experience in this industry. And that's exactly why we choose ITP for our custom builds. It's pretty hard to argue with a side-by-side -side made by Polaris. They were the originators of the sport category, and since the introduction of the Razor have pretty much dominated every single class. 
The original Razor was 50 inches and 800 cc's, and while the motor stayed at this displacement for quite some time, the width grew to 60 inches in 2009. Since that time, there have been few discernible changes to the S model, but a lot of speculation about what would come. Was it time for Polaris to make a serious change, or could the vintage Razor platform continue to deliver in a market that had quickly become a battlefield? Yes, the old Razor was getting a little long in the tooth, but honestly, it still kicked butt and would hold its own against most of the competition. However, it wasn't until Arctic Cat stepped up to the plate and hit a line drive right into the meat of the market with the Wildcat Trail that Polaris decided to respond. And respond they did. Leave it to Polaris to be the ones who bring a fire truck to the squirt gun fight. Not only did they do away with the old 800 motor entirely, they also threw out the baby with the bathwater and started completely from square one. Brand spanking new Razor S stays true to the 60 inch classification, and I believe that's just about the only thing it keeps from the old Razor S. Sporting a 75 horsepower, yeah, 75 freaking ponies, the 60 incher is a missile, and unfortunately for just about every other manufacturer, has exploded directly on target, sending everyone else back to the drawing board. It's not just the 900 Pro Star that makes this such a sweet ride. It's the all new chassis that's able to translate all of that available horsepower into real world results. So right up front, you've got a way bigger cabin space, something that we've been begging for since, well, it's been a long time. No more side net bar intruding into your space, no more cramped quarters, but still that aggressive positioning and low CG seating that we have come to love from the Razor. With the interior space being increased and driver ergonomics being finely tuned to perfection, the performance of the S must be at least on par with the previous version, no? Oh yeah. While we did expect to see a smaller version of the trailing arm XP1K rear suspension, the S gets dual A-arms both front and rear. Is it a disappointment or an issue? Nope, not in the slightest, as the Fox Podium X 2.0s soak up the little stuff, medium gnar, and do a pretty good job with even the big hits. Are they Elka Stage 5s? No, they're not, but they ain't bad. With 13.2 inches out back and 12 and a quarter up front, you've got plenty of travel and an increase all around over the previous S model. The Razor S has always been exceptionally confident sideways. The drift fun factor is big, and keeping in tune with their heritage, Polaris has made sure this new S still gets you giggly when you're sideways at 70. And let me tell you, I pushed this new chassis and suspension hard. It's confident, stable, and thanks to the quick reaction of the ProStar motor, it's easy to steer it with nothing more than the throttle. And speaking of steering, when you're not breaking the rear tires loose and you're actually using this steering wheel, there's a whole lot to talk about. Power steering is standard on all S models, but the most basic, ours is EPS equipped. It's not adjustable, it's not overpowering, but it does deliver the classic Polaris handling characteristics. By this I mean you almost have to check to see if there truly is a power steering unit under the hood. And at higher speeds the reduction helps you feel more sporty and in control, but at lower speeds the effort is significantly reduced and easy to turn the big 27 inch rubber. And yes, the rubber does stay the same as the previous S model at 27 inches, but gone are the days of the bighorns. And I'm not going to say I'm all that sad to see them go. With a complete departure from what we expected, Polaris opted for a set of GBC Dirt Commanders. I personally love these as factory shoes. They are extremely aggressive and will not only give you mind-blowing grip on the track, but incredible high-speed trail traction and exceptionally good low-speed crawling grip. Honestly, this might be the nicest tire package offered from the factory of any side-by-side -side going. I wonder if the bigger horsepower XP1K we all know is in the works will see something like this. One can only hope. I usually like to take a moment to point out a thing or two that seems wrong, but the truth is I can't find any fault in this rig, besides the fact that the EPS versions are just a little bit pricey. You get pretty cool coloration packages. Ours is called the Black Pearl, but it's going to run you about two grand more than the base non-EPS version, and really all you're getting is the EPS and some colors. Unless this is Johnny Depp's Black Pearl, it seems a little steep. Is it a deal breaker? No, but I can't help but wonder what an aftermarket EPS kit and a graphics package actually costs. So the Razor S is all new. 
Is it worth it? Yes. Does it up the game? Absolutely. Is there anything else in the industry that can hold a candle to this vehicle? Well, to answer that question, you're going to have to tune in in a couple of short weeks, where we're going to shoot it out against the only vehicle that we believe can give it a good run for its money. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Dirt Tracks TV's YouTube channel so you never miss another update.